Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on Blender Geometry Nodes where today I'll be teaching you how to make this very nice spiral effect. Just like this, it's very customizable and very easy to use. So without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's clear this scene right here and add in a new plane. This plane will be our Geometry Nodes object. So let's go and add in a new Geometry Node. Move this over a little bit. I'll hide the background for now. And what we want to do first is input a curve primitive line right here. Let's hook that up into our geometry output. And there we go. As we see, we have this curve line right here. And what we want to do next with this curve line is to resample it so that we get many more vertices along the curve. So resample curve node. This will determine our resolution of the curve. So let's set this to 300 just so that we have enough geometry for the effect. And now that we have this, we can start the spiraling process. So to do that, let's use a set position node right here. As we can see, we can manipulate the curve's position using this. And this is how we'll be uh, making the spiral. So to do that, let's use the position node. Then let's input a vector rotate node. There we go, vector rotate. Now if we hook this up into here and this into the position input, we can see that we can now rotate if we select the right axis. Let's use the Y axis for this. We could see that this is now rotating, which is what we want. But now let's make it so that it rotates uh, different amounts depending on the distance from a certain point. So to do that, we'll be using our position input using a vector math node set to length right here. And now we'll hook this up into here and then use a math node to control uh, how intense this effect is by setting this to multiply. Now if we put this here and put this here, we could see that this is now turning into kind of a spiral, which is kind of what we want. Just this effect going like that. And this is one way to create a spiral, but it's not exactly the spiral that we want. To get the spiral that we do want, we need to move the center of the vector rotate node from uh, the beginning position, which is right here, to the end position of our curve, which is, as we can see here, one meter up on the z-axis. So to do that, let's just move this up by one. And as we can see, when we do this, we get another very interesting effect that goes like that, which is very cool. But what if we want to control kind of like the fall off of this effect? Well, to do that, it's also pretty simple. We just add in a... Uh, um, a math node set to power. There we go. Hook this up into there and this into the multiply. And as we can see now, we can control the fall off of this effect. If you go into the negatives, things freak out, so maybe don't do that. But let's keep that in this range. And you, we could use clamp just to keep it from freaking out too much, as we can see here. But now that we control this fall off, we can now get something that looks kind of like a heart if we copy this, rotate it, and move it over a little bit. And there we are. So that's basically the effect. But let's continue this tutorial and make sure we could make this, you know, meshed and uh, customizable. But let's go and make this into one group and put it in one frame just like that. Very nice. Keep your nodes organized, folks. It'll save you a lot of headache in the long run. So let's move this over to here. And now let's mesh this curve. So to do that, let's use the uh, curve to mesh node right here. That should be pretty good. Let's move this over a little bit more. Now we're going to use a curve primitive circle to be our profile object. So if we hook this up here uh, and let's move this down to like 0.1 or maybe like 0.2 or 3. I'll do 0.3. That seems pretty good. Now, as we can see, this is now meshed, but we want the this to taper off at the ends. So to do that, we are going to use the set radius node, set curve radius, there we go. And if we use the curve parameter node or spline parameter node, and we hook up the factor into the radius, we could see it's small down here and it gets bigger towards the end of the curve. Now, if we want to control this, let's use the uh, float curve node right here. And now we could change the profile of this. So let's hook this up right here. There we go. Let's make it large in the middle and small at the ends. There we go. And uh, it looks like it's a little, the fall off's a little weird, so we could customize this a little bit more, make it look a little not as extreme. And you could customize this to your liking. That's the good part about this. 
So there we go, we got that part working. And now let's add in another frame to keep this kind of sectioned off. These are almost like nodes where you could just bring them out and in at different parts and it all works. So there we go, let's move that over to here. And now let's set the material to this because as we can see, there's no material set to it. So to do that, it's pretty simple. Just use the set material node, put it right here. And let's select uh, the orange material. There we go. Now that's perfect. But what if we want to change the parameters per uh, object? Because as we can see, if I move one part here, it affects both of them. And we don't exactly want that. Well, to do that, let's go and bring our input node right here, group input, and let's connect uh, a socket to the exponent here and the multiply here, or any value that you want to change from object to object. So now if we go here and I change this, it'll affect this one, but not the other one, which is exactly what we want. Let's go and hook this up into other parameters like the resolution or the resample count. So if we reduce this one, we could get a very low poly version right here, while well, we still have the high poly version. And let's go and copy this around and let's also attach this to the material. There we go, so we can make this one blue and the other one red or orange in this case. And another thing that some folks don't know is that if you press Control H, you could hide the unused inputs here. Before, I did not know that all too well and I would have like uh, group inputs that were very long and I try to use reroutes and stuff to make the circuitry better. But if you use Control H, you could hide all the unnecessary parts. And that also works with nodes or uh, yeah, full on nodes right here. So if I press Control H, it hides all that. In some cases it works better than others, like here, that works, or here, that works, but you don't need it everywhere. Okay, so I think that's everything that is needed at the moment. We can add in some more group inputs right here, like controlling the resolution, controlling the radius. So this one can be thicker and we could change the resolution down a little bit, even though I don't know why you would want to do that. Maybe in some scenarios that would be good. And yeah, one thing to know, uh, the, this profile object can be anything. So it could be a square, it could be a rectangle. Actually, I'll show a rectangle just for demonstration purposes. So quadrilateral, let's use that right there. And let's bring it down a little bit so that it is not the size of Texas. There we go, that's pretty good. And this can be used for all kinds of effects, as you saw with the uh, with the original screen, which I'll pull that back up in a second. So yeah, if you just move these around and scale them and all that, you could get very nice looking scenes, as we can see here. And I'll leave you with just this uh, the original artwork right here. If I can go and hide the uh, the ones we just worked on. So yeah, that's basically the entire effect. If you enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like and subscribe and check out my Twitter account. You'll see projects that I'm working on there. Check out my Gumroad account. There's plenty of free and paid projects of mine that you can download. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.